They are both ready, I believe. Oh, wait, oh, wait, yeah, we're going in one minute. Teams are ready to go. Roy, bring me some energy here. Let's start going fucking crazy. I was thinking maybe we could just chill out a little bit. I, um, I'm not sure that's appropriate. And... All right, fine. This is the moment we've been waiting for. Months and months have gone by with these guilds training the hardest they've ever done in their lives to try and win. Not only is it gold, not only... Is it the money for Match Arena? No, it is the first ever community-given rating title from ArenaNet for these teams. They are looking to win. Win got knocked down to the lower bracket, and they just narrowly clawed their way back to face SC here in the Grand Finals, our first and only best of five in this entire tournament. Weeks have gone by. Months have gone by. Preparation has gone through the roof from these teams. They are looking to show us the toughest, the best strats, the most DPS, the hardest one button mashing you've ever seen in your lives. <laughs> this is it. This is what everything comes down to. Win versus SC starting us off here in wing seven. Let's see who's going to take it all. Oh, and we actually see the pre being handed. We actually have um, both players doing this, by the way, actually. Uh, Win and SC are so Oh, I love this, Roy. Look what's happening. They're sending players ahead to lure the mobs away so they aren't in the capture circles, accelerating the circle even further, making sure that they have no delays there whatsoever. Meanwhile, over here, we see the rest of the guild just smashing away, demolishing uh, these monsters and moving on to the next circle here. The captures are happening. In fact, we, I believe we actually have Win. A little bit ahead here. So I think you're right here, Roy. They've maybe got something special in store here. Although, actually, I think it's very even. So maybe I was just lying. Well, Teapot, lying is not a great look. But what is a good look is how these teams are approaching this pre-event. And again, yeah, I mean, I think that it's, it's... To me, we haven't really seen teams get a lot of extra time from this initial pre-event, right? This is the very first part of Wing 7. We've seen several Wing 7 so far. We've talked a lot about Adina. We've talked a lot about Sabir. We've talked a little bit about Kadeem too, although nothing too crazy has happened. Most of the Wing 7s we've seen have kind of been over by the point one team gets to Kadeem 2. It hasn't really been that close. We haven't seen an ERP 3 finish, right? With Kadeem 2 being that neck and neck. So I think that the approach from these teams and from other teams, you know, maybe trying to find a way to speed this pre-event up makes a lot of sense. And if one of these two, if any team's going to do it, it's going to be one of these two teams, right? And again, Win picked this 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 wing for a reason. Now we we haven't seen SC on it either, as, as we as we mentioned. So it's possible that they have some strats here. They have some ideas as well. But I'm I'm hoping and expecting to see something from Win that we haven't seen before, uh, or you know maybe maybe we've already seen it and we we just don't realize. But yeah, I think trying to speed up this pre-event makes a lot of sense to me because because you haven't really seen it happen before. And we just haven't, you know, as long as nothing goes wrong with the bosses, and I know that's kind of a silly thing to say, because obviously you don't want things to go wrong, the team shouldn't really gain or lose time from it. But gaining time here in this pre-event has been what a lot of these wings has come down to. Win, they beat QT because of a portal in the pre-event, right? That's it. So if they can gain time here, this gives them a huge advantage coming into this wing. Yeah, I think there is no advantage you can write off here. Every single tiny sliver of time needs to be saved. And I think both those teams, certainly after that last match between Win and QT, they're acutely aware. Because bear in mind, in, in those final two games, the, the, of course, the Wing 3 and the Wing 1 uh, that was kind of traded back and forth there by QT uh, and Win, there was 15 seconds in those two wings. In fact, less than 15 seconds in two raid wings between those two teams. Yeah. So, yeah, I think these teams are going to go far here. And you actually see them essentially mirroring the, the strategies here. Both, uh, you know, making sure to clear those mobs out as quick as possible. Both luring the champions together to cleave them down Ooh, as SC. fast as they can. And yeah, Essie with monstrous damage. They're actually just annihilating the champions. They, they're they way ahead of win. This is... That's like, that's like almost 10 seconds of a lead, I think. Yeah. Over win here. That's after scary. This, -even. this could be a backfire pick here, in fact. I think Essie, maybe when they saw that wing 7 pick, maybe they were happy about it. Well, yeah, and that's why I was saying it's a little bit of a risk, and it is surprising to me because, you know, I think that, you know, unless unless they didn't want Wing 7, picking it first doesn't really make sense. And so I, I'm saying this basically, like, if they had wanted to ban it, obviously they wouldn't have picked it, but unless they're, like, really worried about Wing 7, I think that saving it for later is fine, you know, if... If they if they get their comfort pick, and again, I, in my opinion, their comfort pick has to be wing two, unless again there's just some insane strat they have in the back of their pocket. Apparently later on in this wing, because we haven't seen it yet, right? They haven't done anything crazy 
and they're behind. They're behind a good 10 seconds. So unless they have some crazy strat that's going to get them ahead later on in this wing, I just don't think the wing 7 pick makes sense. I don't think it hurts them to the point, you know, like it's picking a wing that they've lost on. And again, that's why I think banning wing 4 made sense. But it, it, they take a gamble because maybe Snowcrows just executes Wing 7 better. If we haven't seen Snowcrows on Wing 7 yet and they didn't play it badly, you might be giving them something that they want. And so far, they're they're doing well here. They're, they're ahead in Wing 7 yep. as we now start the, the split here to, to get the pre-events cleared for Adina and Sabir. So we're going to have to see something from, from Win here. Uh, we're going to have to see if they, they're able to either get through these two initial bosses and get to Gideon 2 faster, or if they can speed up these pre-events mm. somehow. Um, if, the, if they just have better movement to the bosses, you know, whatever it is. Uh, but, you know, we'll see if it happens. Challenge mode already activated for Sabir. Snowcrow is, is looking to get to that boss and get it done very quickly. Still seeing some, some movement around uh, the pre-events, though, from Win. So, again, still still slightly behind coming out of that uh, that first pre. It was a very precise assignment of players from SC, sending just enough players to actually burn down the Earth Elemental to trigger Adina. And you can actually see that gain them more time there, right? Like, wait, are we going to see Adina be played here first by, uh, by Win? I think we, we are. Ooh, that's something we don't see often, actually. We're going to see the inversion. Oh. Normally, we see Sabir for both teams. But this time, it's actually going to be Adina. And they do start at about the same time there, actually. So I have to kind of eat my words a little bit. I actually thought that SC pulled ahead um, on the pre-event, but actually, I think Win gained time back, actually, starting these fights at some time. Of course, it does, it, of course, getting to the bosses themselves does require a different amount of setup time, and, of course, Win may pay for this later when they go for, um, Ooh, when they go for stack. Sabir, but... I guess it might not yeah, matter. Yeah, it doesn't really it, matter because right? they're going to skip them it's, anyway, it's right? Little, it is a little different. Yeah. Uh, that'd be, uh, you know, but yeah, as long as they skip it, which they do, no problem. But yeah, I mean, I guess... You know, does finishing Adina, because I think Adina should be a little faster than Sabir, right? If you execute everything properly, you should be able to finish Adina a bit before Sabir. I, you know what, honestly, I, I actually, I'm not actually entirely sure. I think there are, I think Adina will be the faster boss, yeah, because there's just some downtime in Sabir here, and there's some kind of cop blocks you have to deal with, but uh, certainly they're actually surprisingly similar, I think, because, you know, there's a lot of skips going on, and we see portals here from SC accelerating that boss phase, but yeah, you know, just like... In general, like, there's just more phases in Sabir, so there's going to be delays there. So Adina will probably there's... be faster. But I think we're going to have to see, like, how they're going to regroup a little bit later on. The, the only thing that makes sense to me, right, coming from, like, a strategic standpoint, a strategic point of view is, Win must think that getting from Adina to Sabir is faster than the other way around. Because that's the only reason you would do this boss first, right? I mean, mm. maybe, it doesn't make, maybe it doesn't make a difference, right? Maybe it literally makes no difference which one you do first. And so they were like, look, everyone's been doing Sabir first. Let's just do Adina first. Or it just was like, hey, let's just do Adina first. And it makes absolutely no difference. And they're just, you know, like messing with me. But if they picked this wing for a reason, and if they're doing Adina first when, when we usually never see that, Unless it was just pure chance, they must think that it's faster to go from Adina to Sabir than vice versa, or else why are they doing this? And, you know, that's the only thing that, that really comes to mind to me. But, I don't know, I mean, we're seeing 50% of Adina, right? So they, they've gotten two phases done. We're seeing, you know, it's it's getting to the last platform here for Sabir, right? So, it's roughly similar stages. Obviously, again, different bosses, so it's going to be slightly different. But... You know, I mean, we're not going to really know who's going to get to Kadeem first based off of these kills. It's really going to come down to the second Jin kills, assuming neither group has any issues here. Um, oh, so far, uh, no issues for Adina and Win. I just love to Go see ahead. this here, by the way, uh, from S. This is just magic here, to be honest, Roy. Uh, so basically... The mechanic that's happening on Sabir right now, you have to go in the tornado to avoid the shockwave. SC are scourge portaling everyone through the shockwave. And the reason they're doing this is to keep the action key to break the bar faster, but also having the action key gives you a damage increase as well while you have that action key. So you don't want to lose it by going in the tornado, right? So they're just maximizing their damage even further. And you know, we were talking about how uh, Adida might be the faster boss. SC is looking to prove us wrong by absolutely yeah. demolishing Sabir. I do believe Win will actually still have the upper hand here. They will kill Adina before Sabir falls for SC. Because SC taking that a little while on that break bar, but um, it's going to be very close. All actually. right, well, this is it. Let's see if they do something crazy here to get to Sabir because they are going to kill Adina. And by the way, I will also say, I think getting Adina out of the way first is maybe a little bit of a... It relieves a little pressure, right? Because I think we've seen groups fall to Adina far more often than Sabir. So maybe that's also part of it. Maybe the, it's just like a mental thing. They're saying, look, we got Adina already. Now we just have to kill Sabir fast, right? And because we know we can execute there. And then we go to Kadeem too. But 
I don't know. I mean, they're, they're at Severe Platform. SC has just finished uh, Severe Ooh. as well now, so Win are going to be waiting. What's... One player falling behind a bit, actually, like Mythic. Uh, he, yeah. he, I think he missed something. He either didn't get the portal or he wasn't able to How mount was... up. He, he was maybe in combat or something for some reason and couldn't quite break out that. Is that a was a serious delay. Yeah, that was a rough delay there, actually. Um, going into Sabi, he wasn't able to mount up there in the same time. Maybe he, like, just barely missed it or something like that. That is very, very rough indeed. Uh, oh, no, my streams. Show me the streams. Okay, never mind, but Adina's underway now as well. Both teams kind of at similar boss position. But, of course, I do believe Sabir will be the slower encounter. Oh, oh, now that is interesting, actually. The down seconds, instead of spreading, now that is art form right there, Roy. Instead of spreading, they assigned players to stack, eat the damage, and insta reheal to maximize damage. And SC is going to die to Adina. Wait, no, they're not. They actually just barely get away with it. Wow. They they almost failed the DPS check there as well and had three downs, but they recover it, burn the boss, and res. Wow. Wow. I mean, pretty incredible things from both teams, but yeah, I mean... Maybe, maybe this is it. This is, oh, there's a dead player, though, oh. on SC side. And the down state. Oh. And, and this is what I was talking about as well. I mean, I think getting Adina out of the way first, it, two players did three. They're wiping. Oh. That's GG. SC are going to have to restart Adina. Oh, dear. And oh, dear. Oh, dear. Oh, I, dear. I, I mean, I don't know. I couldn't say it better myself, except I literally did. Adina is the boss that messes players up, messes teams up in this wing. There's a downstate from Win here on, on Sabir, so I may have to eat my words in a minute. But I think getting Adina out of the way first, it makes so much sense. Oh, no. I did. I cast her curse them, Teapot. Oh, no. Three players no. in downstate. Oh, no. Those reses are so hard because on challenge mode, guys, reviving is much slower. However, they actually get it out of phase. They should be able to recover it. There we go. They do get it. They need to get their other player. They find it. Perfect. Good. All right. So they recover it. That was so a good timing. Now they're nine manning. Yeah, that's it's gonna slow them down, but they're still minute. ahead here. Yeah. They're definitely ahead. I just want to say, I don't think this is the same situation at all. But the last time we saw SC wipe on a boss, and the last time we saw oh, no. win nine mana they boss, did catch up. SC did win that wing. Yeah, I just just saying. yeah. It is a little bit of a different situation, though. This is certainly much much better for win. They're they're definitely ahead here. Um, the nine the, the nine man shouldn't really cost them here at this point i think there's definitely enough time as long as they don't lose more players and they don't have to restart this but that it, it, the pressure is building now and, and it's it's you know what i was saying before in my opinion still holds true I, I still think you you get a little bit less pressure when you have adina dead already because like again i think adina is just the trickier boss but you know at this point the stakes are so high it maybe doesn't matter at all which boss you do first which boss is already dead because there's just going to be so much pressure and stress on you anyways to perform and to not fail and now with a, with a player dead, not having to nine man this boss when the reses are so difficult as you pointed out just now, maybe that doesn't help you know as much as I'm saying it does. That being said, win are ahead right now. If they can kill Sabir here, it's they're they're in a very good position to to finish this with a victory because Kadim Two usually does not present challenges for these teams, right? We haven't seen them really struggle with Kadim Two before. Getting past these two Jin bosses is usually the barrier to winning. And so far, win are ahead in that point. And, and they're looking like they should get there first. Yep, it should be 20% to go. And of course, there's still one more kind of one of these time-gated phases with these hands, these rock hands. There's still one more of those for SC. So SC's got a bit of a barrier to go through here. Portal being used here as well to speed up the final encounter here. Sabir is going to die in mere moments, actually. SC certainly have a lot of time to make up here. Uh, I think it's going to be more than comp difference uh, or strategic difference. It's going to have to be a mistake from downstate cucks to actually throw this final break where I was going to happen about now. If it if they all die now, that would, might be enough to give SC a bit of an advantage. Uh, it certainly is they all die surprisingly now, I think close. Sense, yeah. um, but it is... It's still very much in the... And they go 12.52, second gin falls. I think that's going to be around... Ooh, probably actually over a minute advantage for win right now. Yeah, uh, and it, it is still relatively close because this last burn on Adina is going to be very, very fast for SC. But that wipe really cost them. I, I mean, it's it's you know it's the opposite of what we saw the first time these two guilds faced. The, the wipe really didn't hurt SC at all. The the ninth or the tenth player dying, excuse me, from win did, and that that was re really essentially cost them the win. Plus a couple of of maybe strategic differences. But I mean, here you know it's just the wipe from SC actually hurt them this time. Um, and and there you go. And Kadim 2 is going to be started up very shortly here. Yep.
And Adina falls. Oh, yeah, about a minute behind, approximately. Of course, the RP. Oh, and this RP, it's got to be gut-wrenching right now for SC because there's a bit of dialogue. They can't get to the boss. Of course, Downset Cucks have already dealt with it, and they've already got themselves set up, ready to rock and roll Did right now. Did you skip RP? I don't think so. I, I I don't want to I don't want to say something because I'm just you know uneducated. But it looks like oh did they actually skip the RP? Wow. Wait, have they is there they found the way? I actually did the same thing. SC did the same thing. As oh, well. hang on, they have skipped the RP actually. Ooh, I actually did not even do that. Both, RP both teams have done it. Though. Has been skipped. Yeah, both teams have done it, and that actually makes things very spicy. There's a twenty percent advantage right now, but oh. Now, that is workable, I'm not gonna lie, for SC. If they have disgusting DPS and a player dies, or maybe a down state or two for win, that is workable. But yeah, both of these teams with a few little secrets uh, in the store here, apparently, skipping the yeah. roleplay. Compositions are actually very similar here, just Renegades, Dead Eyes here, and a Scourge for SC. Similar, of course, um, uh, for their <laughs> opponents here as well. Chat, they didn't, they didn't hack, they didn't hack to- They have hacked, yeah. guys. Both of these teams uh, are being reported. They are over. hackers, guys. Don't worry, guys. Don't worry. Both of these guys are gonna be disqualified. I will get all the winnings. It's okay. Don't worry. It's fine, all right? Just send me your gold and your money and I get the 15 community hero, or 10 community hero titles. This is GVG, excuse me. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but no, it's fine. Both of them have skipped the RP, which means that uh, both of them are now just racing to burst this boss down. But win, win ahead. They're ahead. I mean, I I wonder what. I, I guess SC would, SC would have been ahead if they hadn't wiped, right? Th they must have been. Yeah, yeah, they would be. If, they definitely. They wiped, yeah, they would have so. been. They'd been quite a long way ahead actually too, because they're kind of gaining on their opponents right now. Like you can see, the DPS is very extreme for Snowcrows. Th but there's got to be some kind of thing that we haven't seen before, right? SC need to have something up their sleeve. Right, for this final, um, for this kind of like the ladder phase. They need something up there because they're still 20% behind or so. The fire phase, second fire phase at 60% now being dealt with there. And the first challenge mode phase being started by Win. Great fire placement here to burn down all of the uh, spooky anomalies that spawn. Uh, so they'll die very quickly. But it's got to be some kind of special source strat that has never before been seen. And also, Win aren't doing it. That's the only way they can win at this point. Yeah. I think this might just come down to when executed this raid better, and I mean, oh, there's a downstate here. Ooh, that's they scary, actually. They need to res that. They and need to res get, that. Yeah, he's, he's gonna get picked up. Yeah, he's, he's okay. Uh, you know, I mean, I think obviously Win picked this 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 round, or the, excuse me, this wing, and so I think that that should give them a you know they should be a little bit more confident coming into this maybe, and that's fine. They they obviously recuperated after losing and getting down to the lower bracket, losing to SC, getting beaten down by them. So, you know, I, I think this is just them performing well. This does not by any means whatsoever mean that SC is going to lose because they still have at least two more rounds to go after this. But really, really well played from, from the dungeon cucks uh, from win here. And yeah, I, I mean, it's just, they, they just executed this wing very well. SC though, I mean, they've they've done an excellent job of catching up after that wipe. Say what you will, we've seen SC wipe twice now, and the first wipe maybe didn't mean that much. They recuperate after a wipe very effectively. Yeah, they're very a robust effectively. team. They really are. Of course, Boone's coming through a stability for win. Nothing bad happening there. A few players do take, uh, take some damage there, but they are good to go. The lightning bolts bringing the pain. Of course, it's actually, uh, the, the gap really has uh, closed down a fair bit, actually. I believe it's uh, just 10% now, actually, in favor of downstate cucks. However, uh, I don't really think there's any way for them to actually lose, okay? No. I, I, you know, we, we can overhype this as much as we want, uh, unless something completely catastrophic happens. And I, I, I love this as well, actually, by the way. Um, so there's another thing that is really worth pointing out, I think, as we, you know, the round is essentially in its uh, in its ending phase here. Um, can you see what the players are doing with win right now? Like, there are these red tethers, guys, right? These red tethers will latch onto other players, uh, reducing the damage they do uh, across the entire board, and it will chain. And what win is doing here, they're actually having all three players who have the tether to be on the same side so it doesn't chain maximizing the damage output for the team because you can see that it kind of like bounces between players this is something that i have honestly never seen done correctly before this is one of the first times i've ever seen it done so extremely good understanding of the mechanics here by win a massive optimization and they're about to close it out two percent left on the
the boss. And there's 1%. That's and it. that is it. 1835. 10% for SC. So definitely some big speed. But the god can bleed, Roy. That is the first match that SC have lost. Yes, and that is something that, I mean, SC is really astounded. I mean, even on that Wing 7, right, they were... You know, they were kind of, you know, in the rear view mirror, right? They were creeping up yeah. on their opponents, like with a yeah. massive deficit. They kind of squashed it with just big numbers alone and the comp theory crafting there. And yeah, we're going in 45 seconds. Just one quick thing, Roy. We are over $2,000, 2,071. Huge shout out there to Pang, Heck the X, there, Scooby Sharky uh, earlier, and all the one, that, everyone doing the little sponsor quest there, guys. I really appreciate that. But there will be plenty of time to say how amazing our audience is and how amazing the support is for the tournament because you're about to show your amazing support for the teams themselves because this wing one starts in less than 10 seconds. Here we go. Let's see what these teams have in store. Will there be any special source? Let's find out. The go signal has been sent. The match is underway. Yeah. And honestly, I think having Wing 1 as a rematch for these two teams is pretty exciting because we didn't see either team play perfectly on the first Wing 1 that they faced each other. Obviously, Snowcore's wiping on Veil Guardian. Obviously, Win losing that 10th player basically at the start of the Veil Guardian, so they essentially 9-manned it. And that's what ended up maybe costing them the, the win, as well as the, the later on sort of, uh, you know, pre-event shenanigans that they had to deal with. So I think if both teams just, you know, they, they, they are able to execute better this time around, it'll be really interesting to see if one of them has a better wing one than the other. Um, now, so far, obviously, just pre-event happening. We're not going to see anything crazy happen here. Uh, but, yeah, I, I mean, just based off of comp, are there a lot of comp differences? I know we, we touched upon it a little bit with the Double Warrior, but are there a lot of comp differences that you think is going to give one team an advantage here? We, we see an Ellie again for, for Snowcrows. Well, do, you know, we see that the, the downside cut. Oh, a downside. Well, speaking of downside, there's a downside. That is not yeah. good. That's going to slow them down a little bit. SC actually having a bit of trouble. The Seeker's kind of trolling them a little bit, but they actually clean it up and move directly onto Veil Guardian. Ooh. Sub minute there. And yeah, Win just a little bit slower here. In terms of comp, I actually think that uh, Win's comp is very, very robust. I, I'm not. Wait, what the, what the hell is going on there, actually? Wait, what is SC doing? Hang on. What is this? They are tanking over towards blue instead of middle. Now that is interesting. We can't even talk about the comp because we've got to talk about this. What are they doing here? So I, I wait, they're, they're, what are they doing? Are they pull, are they going to pull them all to the middle? They're doing greens. Do they have a, they have a healer though, don't they? Yeah, there's a druid there. Interesting. I, I presume they just, I, I guess they value the Scholar uptime then, actually, maybe. They, they're just very highly valuing the Scholar uptime. And they have so much burst damage. Uh, and, you know, they're, they're confident in landing that burst. That the movement is irrelevant to them, I presume. Going for the triple split here. Let's see if they do that again, actually. I'm super curious. The port actually takes them closer to the boss. Let's see if they tank mid now. This time they are going to tank mid by the looks of it, actually. Yeah, they're, wait, or, or are they actually? Are they moving again? No, they are going to tank mid this time. I think Wynn have caught up, actually, a little bit. They're still slightly behind, but they were a lot farther behind after that. So I don't know. You know, I'm wondering if maybe there was just an issue with, with the beginning of that, that split. Maybe they, that wasn't their intention, and, and somehow it got messed up, and they were able to adapt to it pretty quickly. Yeah, Wynn is but ahead now, actually. Either way, Wynn, Wynn were much farther behind at the beginning of this due to a downstate happening right before they ported here. Again, the second downstate on that pre-event. And, and they've... I'd say they're only a couple of seconds behind here where they were probably a good yeah. five plus before. So so good well well done to win, but again, that could just be because of that that early sort of boss movement. Um whether that was intentional or an accident, not helping SC get ahead. That that being said though, they are still ahead. They do still have the advantage in this wing so far, and of course we've seen them perform very well in this wing, you know, in the past. So you know, coming down to, to these couple of seconds might not be the biggest difference here, especially for SC. They might be able to just get a couple of more seconds out. But wait a minute. Is Win ahead of them? No. I mean, Win is pumping. The delay, I think, is favoring them. So I think it, it, they might be appearing yeah. further ahead than they are. I believe it's incredibly close. So VG dies 315. I think it died 316, actually, for Cuck. So one second behind, maybe. But uh, again, like, SC, that's uncharacteristic from them, I think. I don't think that, that was I don't think that was intentional there. I mean I'd I'd love to think it was some kind of bizarre, highly advanced strap, but I think it was simply a mistake yeah. with the tanking uh there at the start. Like leading to an unexpected delay from there. But that certainly gives a win a bit of a you know bit of a payback there for that downside. Roy, you did a great job writing this script, I've gotta say. Like, you know, like uh, can we get a clap in the chat for the script writers here? 
people were people were complaining about all the two O's, all the 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 non great scripts. Listen, guys, when have I ever disappointed? All right, I know the mode of finals wasn't the best. Okay, that was my mistake. Okay, I I I, I accidentally deleted the the real final draft, and I had to get a, an old saved copy last minute there. But apart from that, I don't disappoint when it comes to to raid tournaments. Okay, and I really hope. This is not going to come back to bite me in the butt because that would suck. But, you know, yeah, that's right. Why does Roy already know the results? Because everything that you see on this screen is being done by paid actors. I wrote something and they read it and they're they're acting it out. That's that's why. But anyways, nonetheless, nonetheless, we are going to be seeing these teams uh, completing this pre-event here. Which do you ever now? You know, I think that the way that this has been done, this this sort of portal part of this um, of this pre-event. I feel like it's always been done more or less the same, right? Like, there haven't really been some, some serious... And I could be wrong with that, but from what I understand, it doesn't seem like there's really serious changes since people began just portaling everywhere. Do you think there's anything that could be done to, to speed this up that people just aren't doing or that they haven't tried? There, So, there are a few things here. So, what you want to avoid... That this is kind of... It's very hard to control, and it's difficult to see the impact of this. But what can happen is that... Um, they can, if if uh, one of these circles spawns, if it randomly picks the same spot, it won't spawn. That is to say, uh, if you really quickly capture all of them, you get the optimal speed. And if you don't do it really fast, in other words, if you don't cap it before the next one spawns, in theory, it can double spawn on itself, slowing you down. So what you're going to see these teams doing is just getting them as quick as possible, insta-capping them, and then moving on. And of course, you know, in a bit, in the same way that Bandit Trio is, right? Like Bandit Trio, um, you need to kill the final boss really quickly, right? And the same thing is is applicable here, of course, to a lesser degree. You know, it's going to be saving like, you know, a second or two maybe. Uh, capturing the final circle obviously is a direct time acceleration. So capturing the final circle, getting to that one very quickly is important. And of course, portaling on to the next room is also essential. But I imagine both of these teams are probably going to have borderline perfect execution here. So I don't think it really changes changes the state of play and essentially yeah this is a bit of a flat time gate with some very minor uh, optimizations all right fair enough fair enough almost done here though we'll be both of these teams with this portal part and then we'll be moving on to the spirit run and you know the first time we saw this obviously again veil guardian had changed you know things a little bit and certainly affected the performance of both of these teams but we did see i i believe sc uh actually catch up to win, they were slightly behind the first time, right? Um, and and they did catch up to them through. out of the spear run. And wait a minute, and yeah, win win are ahead again. So we did see win. They, they this is the same situation we saw before. Win were a little bit ahead here, but after the spirit run uh, and after Gorsaval, or sorry, up, up to Gorsaval, I think that SC had caught up. Uh, but again, win were able to take it back, and then again they fell behind, right? You know, there's, again, like you mentioned before, this this tug of war, this back and forth with, between these two teams. But so far, you know, Wynn are maintaining a, a, a lead, and, and they did come back after, you know, being a little bit behind from Veil Guardian. So I wonder if it's just that they, they do the portals better than SC, and then SC does the Spirit Run a little bit better, uh, if SC maybe does Gorsaval a little bit better, or, you know, what have you. But, you know, regardless, I, I really am interested to see how it's going to end up coming down to it, because, again, Wynn lost this, and I think they lost it hard, because... Again, you know, mostly because of that that tenth player death on on Veil Guardian, but I still think that SC just they did just win based off their merits. So it'll be really interesting to see if if they've done anything differently since this run and literally two wings ago when they beat QT on it, or if they're just trying to execute that same run but better. Exactly what we're watching right now. In fact, Snow Crows. I believe they're actually a decent bit behind now. That wall goes down at 750. It's going to die about 755. Five seconds behind for SC. Wow. I, I mean. Imagine if this is 2-0 after being 0-2'd in the upper bracket yeah. finals. That would be yeah. certainly a big momentum. That would be a big emotional set of momentum there. And boom, there it is, 8-11 there for the Cucks. 8-15 there. So, it's, you know, essentially, you know, it's a bit of a wash there. They're just still on the same tempo here. Uh, very good speed here as well. But SC, they're going to have to prove themselves. Like, their DPS on these next two bosses, it needs to be flawless, Roy. It has to be perfect. Otherwise, they're actually going to find themselves on match point. And I don't, I, I think it's fairly safe to say, Roy, they probably weren't expecting that. No, I mean, you know, certainly the, the Wing 7 not, you know, them wiping on Adina and potentially costing them that loss, certainly not ideal. Although, wait a minute, I, I, 
Look at this again. I think they caught up. Yeah, that was They're a... hitting Gorsuwa and Ascension yeah. at the same time. 850. They caught up uh, yeah. with that jumping puzzle. They did. They got the jumping puzzle there a they little bit slower. They did it again. Slower. That, yeah, again, we, we, did it again. we saw the same thing, right? We saw the exact same thing is that um, SC had a better time with the jumping puzzle and and uh, Win was a little bit slower handling all of those buttons. And now they're ahead. If there's even a slight DPS advantage for SC, they will push themselves into the lead. Here comes the first phase. They that, are. Yeah, and they are as well. That DPS is monstrous. Oh my now, God. the big thing on this boss, though, is still the split phase. It is still going to be handling these four ghosts that are spawning. Uh, so that is something that they, we, we need to really keep an eye on here. If these teams can get, uh, if you if they're going to gain any ground, it's going to be here, not the actual boss, because their DPS is obviously going to be very, very high when it comes to that, but you can see that Snowcrow's handling it very well. All four of them dying within a few moments of each other. Uh, oh, and actually win, yeah, honestly similar. I wouldn't really say that was necessarily a lot worse, but they're actually now nearly 10% behind. This is the revenge of SC, and you know, once again, you've got to give them so much credit for this, right, right? Like, that Veil Guardian had to be frustrating, right? I, you know, I can imagine it getting yeah. a bit heated there, right? You know, like that was like, you know, oh my god, like what is going on? Is the curse happening? Is it actually happening again? Are we going to lose in the finals? But no, SC is saying that we are going to recover. They have a steely, cold determination to win Listen, today. I mean, I was, before the jumping puzzle, I was like, wow, win are really, they're actually pushing ahead. By a decent amount. They, they, we might be going to link two on a 2-0. And then as soon as the JP ended, they were it was identical screens. And now SC are ahead again. Their DPS is just better. Their Gorsaval is just better. This team in wing one is just better. I, I don't know. It's 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 shocking to me. It's astounding how how well this team just pushes ahead after a certain point. It's like they they just they flip the switch after the jumping. Oh, look at this, fifteen percent yeah, on Gorsuvall when they finish it. Opening on oh, this is wild. The engine the. <laughs> The monstrous damage of Snuggers. And a downside for downside Cuxler as well. They do get the speedy revival and restabilize it. But yeah, they lost a lot of time on that boss. Sabbath, a pre-event now initiates. I think this is going to be a place where SC will be competent here as well. Of course, um, we actually did see a very strong performance here by Wynn here as well. Uh, Portland Wynn, yeah. to the boss. And I think we're going to see both teams go for that here once again. Uh, that will be awesome to see there. Of course, if any of those teams miss it, then it's pretty much going to be over for them here. So we see the portal about to be opened here very, very shortly while the bandits are being cleaned up down here. And Sabbath goes on there. And look, oh, the Cucks, they need something special right now. Otherwise, this is going to go back to a 1-1, which is not horrible, to be fair. But still, I think they prefer a 2-0. <laughs> what, would, what would these Wing 1 runs from SC look like if they had perfect execution in the first part of it? Because... When they they seem to be able to move from the portal part of this to the spirit run better, and they seemed to move through the spirit run just a little bit better than SE, and they also came out of Veil Guardian, I think, a little bit ahead, which is essentially the same as the first win. Uh, sorry, the first round. Oh, look at this portal again to Sabatha! B but again, SC just keeps on moving past them yeah, at a blazing speed. speed as soon as the JP hits. I, I don't know, Tipa. I don't... Look, if you're ever in a rating tournament against SC, you ban wing one. Yeah, that's it. You, just you, you get cannot it. beat this team in wing one. It's not happening. It doesn't matter. Uh, I don't know. E even when they try and throw, they can't lose. They still can't lose. And now they're just a pretty good chunk ahead here. The DPS is really coming through big time. The damage is absolutely massive here. This is... I actually think this is one of the best performances I've ever seen. Like, in, it, just, just thinking about all the factors, I and again, it's it's really interesting because it seems like they're behind in every single one of these runs <laughs> until the JP, and then they just they just flip it on, and and suddenly they're zooming. It's like it's not even close at this point. The beginning of this raid tournament, sorry, excuse me, the, this raid specifically, this wing, it looks close, and now it looks like it looks like a completely different caliber of raid teams. They are just so much farther ahead at this point than Win. There's no way for Win to catch up. There's nothing Win can do to catch up to them at this point. SC has to mess up, and I don't see that happening on Sabbath. She's already 50%. We're, we're almost certainly going to be going into Wing 2 tied up here. SC pulling it back. It almost looked like we could see a 2-0 victory here going into Wing 2 for Win, but that's not going to be happening. SC is not going out without a fight. They no, are no, not no, no, going to no. be losing this cleanly they're they're gonna make win work for that win and it is going to be a 1-1 knuckles now spawning sabbath just hitting 50 percent on win screen i don't know you gotta give it to sc you do 
and the mistakes, all the time losses, it just makes them faster, right? Ignoring the heavy bombs. They're pretty much ignoring every cannon as well. You can see the cannons uh, stacking up and starting to spawn here. And essentially, they're just going to burn the boss down with absolutely no regard for the mechanics whatsoever. The raid designers are crying right now as SC ignore absolutely everything and demolish their creation live on stream. Cause it could... The AN, as you say, Roy, this run... Could be better. That's the worst part about all of this. And we, if this is exactly yeah. what happened, right? You, you were talking about this, but this is literally what happened to Win on Wing 1 earlier today, right? Like, SC had a just a bad start, a rough start, a few mistakes here and there, but they just slowly caught up. They reeled them in over the duration of the wing, and... Well, it's going to be a repeat of that, and it's going to be moving on to Wing 2, Salvation Pass, very, very soon indeed. Just 20% left on the boss. The DPS continues to ramp up. Uh, the final ad there, card being finished off, of course, uh, by Downstate Cucks now. But that is a 15% uh, difference in boss HP, maybe even more than that, to be honest. And this boss has not got long to live right now. Oh, that was a nice uh, teleport through the flame wall there by Yui. And there we go, 1501. Not their finest work, but certainly good enough to what win here. What was the time? What was it earlier today? Do you know? Uh, what, uh, what, I think, it was, I think they actually did a bit better, though. I believe it was actually sub-15. Um, or, oh, no, it was, it was, okay. yeah, or, or maybe not, actually, no. Apparently, it was above 15 as well. It was, like, 1540 or something like that. Um, but maybe not. I don't know. I need to get, start keeping track of all this stuff, guys. Wow. Of course, uh, Downstate Cucks finishing the job here as well. Uh, they have now concluded their run. But that takes it to 1-1. One, one. It is a 1-1. One, one. And they're about to Absolutely get started, I believe. Works. Yep, there we are. There we go. Here we go. Stealth is happening, running through the tower, running through the uh, little tunnel here to start the boss. There's a portal there to accelerate even further. Win also doing the same, and you can see the teams are very evenly matched in this regard. There and eating the mushroom, it's triggering the main fight, and away we go. Let's see this DPS. This is certainly um, a very, very DPS-oriented fight uh, that, you know, you can burst it down incredibly quickly. And kind of managing cooldowns and handling burst windows is extremely key. Of course, break bar damage. And, you know, think, definitely watch the break. Ooh, a downside here for, uh, for the, for the Cuxergy, but they revive it very, very quickly. But honestly, that, that right there is something you don't want in a run that's going to be this close. And we already see that the break bar is faster for Essie. They get to it immediately and start annihilating. And already... Downstate cuts are actually a little bit behind, and look at this burst damage from Snow Crows. This is unreal. The Sloth just woke up, and they are going to hit him over the head with a hammer and send him back to sleep immediately. Wow, that really is quite something. Second bar now coming through. Uh, as well for downstate cucks, both teams bursting incredibly hard. A CC very strong there for snow crystals. Both these teams, they know what buttons actually CC stuff. They know what the hell is going on here. But the damage is really coming through onto this boss, and both teams actually appear to be fairly evenly tied. Though actually, I, you know, if, if I'm not mistaken, here it's very close. Yeah, I, I'd say winner a little bit behind that downstate, certainly affecting it. I mean, it's it's hard to say, but yeah, they, they're definitely a little behind. I don't know if that's going to be the difference because we've seen them gain so much time on the, the Matthias pre-event. That being said, SC will be aware of this and certainly be trying to, at the very least, replicate and not make it better. But wait, there's a downstate. Wait, Ooh, that's a full he death. Die? I think that's a full death. That's a death, yeah. That's a full death inside of SC. Now, it's happened pretty late in the fight. So that's not a killer, but it's, it's that, that again, that should be, that, that could be pretty bad. There's a downstate again on the side of win, but they are going to bring it back and... Last break bar is going to be coming out here unless they can skip it. No, that's going to be an 8% break bar. They might be able to find a lead here. They might be able to pull back ahead, but I don't know. It's going to be so close. 9% for the break bar here on win side. I think SC still finish it first. That death, not really going to matter that much in the end. It happened late enough in the fight that it doesn't matter, and win will fall farther behind here with Sloth. Yeah, uh, that was a very scary moment there. Of course, uh, SC were going for a very aggressive strategy there, trying to pull off, uh, you know, really minimally eating mushrooms, not wasting any time doing that. If that floor, if the mushroom had regrown, that could have been a scary moment. They did have enough of a buffer uh, to negate the loss of that player. Of course, as you say, it was very late into the game, so that is good stuff. Of course, both teams now have a bit of a breather here as they go into Bandit Trio, the time gate. But I mean, look at that timer. I am so curious how fast this is actually going to be. I This is going to be quite something. Uh, now, Bandit Trio is going to be a bit of a long one here. It's going to be, I think it takes like six or seven minutes to actually do, um, you know, uh, approximately maybe even a little bit more than that. 
Uh, so they're going to have to waste a bit of time. But after that, they will fully unchain, unleash themselves and destroy the final encounter, Matthias there. And of course, this uh, is, you know, an even score now. It's a 1-1, one, one, so whoever wins will find themselves once again in the ad advantageous spot there, of course. Uh, if SC win, they'll put themselves to a 2-1, uh, taking the lead in the series for the first time. Uh, Downstate cuts if they win here, of course. This is um, yeah, this is uh, going to be their pick, of course. Uh, so if they win here, they put themselves back into the lead that they had before. And both teams uh, essentially low-manning the encounter. Like, all they're doing here is they're going to ferry players up to pre-clear some of these bandits and then set up a huge chain of portals um, and then teleport all over the place. Yeah. You know, I I say that I've, I've been saying this the whole time and I, you know, it's it's just basically me repeating the same question over and over again, but I do wonder if there's any way to speed this pre-event up at all, or, or rather not even speed the pre-event up because it is essentially time gated, right? But, you know, do, may, set it up so that the, the actual Matthias pre-event itself can be done even faster than we saw Wind do it before. Or, you know, if there's anything that people haven't, you know, explored yet. And I think, to be fair, we might even see that happen, right, with, with SC here. Because we know what Wynn is going to be trying to do. Uh, and SC knows that as well. So it's just going to be, is SC going to replicate that? Or do they have an idea, you know, to, to try and speed things up to, to improve upon the execution of Wynn? Uh, but, you know, I mean, at the end of the day, I don't think it's come down to the the difference after Sloth yet on a wing two run. I think it usually comes down to the Matthias pre-event that really gives one team the lead over the other. And it might come down to the Sloth time now at this point because I think both of these teams should be looking to execute the Matthias pre-event the same way. And because SC just, they had a better time on Sloth, they had a better go of it, that honestly just could give them the win there. Uh, which is, I think, something different than what we've seen previously on wing two runs. Exactly right. Uh, these are all the things that it does come down to uh, over time. Uh, but now we just see the continuation of this event. More portals coming through here from Snow Crows. There's waiting. Certainly a moment of tension within the run here as they uh, kind of mentally prepare themselves for Matthias. I mean, I would love to see a DPS race, Roy, on Matthias. Actually. I'd like to see them because I, I, I actually think, you know what? I think DPS race is surprisingly likely here um, because... Yeah. I agree. Uh, because I think they're both going to do the pre-event very well, right? Because, you know, talk about this earlier, how, how a lot of the time it has come down to that, right? Like, just, hand, how, you know, getting these, like, small advantages outside of the bosses. But I think there's something to be said for having that full-on, proper boss race. And I think if it's going to happen anywhere, it's going to happen here. I uh, want we'll to kind of keep an eye on how uh, separate the teams are going into the actual Matthias pre-event. Uh, and then see, you know, when they actually start Matthias. That's something to watch out for your team, okay? Hey, listen up, chat. Open your eyeballs. Use your eyeballs. Take a look at these timings, because these timings are extremely important here. Like, once again, we've already seen a wing come down to five seconds, and this is an even shorter wing than wing one, which is the wing where that happened. So, this is going to be it. Okay, how many seconds will separate these two teams? Of course, let's cleaning up these bosses here. I mean, look, I'm sure you guys are enjoying this bandit trio here. And look, you can go, hey, you know what? You, you know what's great, guys? You can say that you're basically the same speed as SC and Win on bandit trio because even they can't speed it up, unfortunately. Uh, maybe someone will come up with a miraculous strategy in the future. Maybe someone breaks the game somehow to make it go a little bit faster. But as of right now, they're just, just on the hack. second mini boss. Why don't Why don't teams just hack and and get past trio you know you know uh okay th th this is not quite the same thing but there was actually a strategy um that a team the team actually isn't playing in the tournament anymore actually but they came up with a strategy that has this bizarre side effect that it does speed up trio a little bit but it actually makes it so matthias doesn't spawn oh well that is or not, not ideal sometimes doesn't spawn so it's kind of oh. like hmm maybe not exactly worth it you know uh, <laughs> That would be, honestly, I would love to see someone do that in the raid event, though. Like, assume, or raid tournament, assuming it isn't banned. And, and like, gamble on whether or not he spawns and and pull it off. That would be the, that would be the funniest thing ever. I mean, how much, how much does it speed up Trio? Uh, it is, it is a significant save. Um, in particular, yeah, kind of, it, okay. it allows you to, to kind of funnel into Trio and then move on to the next phase. It would, to be honest, it will probably be disallowed anyway because it is a, it's a, a little bit exploity, yeah, okay, right? It's a little, uh, sure. little bit sure. exploity. Uh, but um, yeah, it, it's a decent time save. It just has some potentially unfortunate consequences, and you have to completely reset the instance, which obviously is not ideal. Um, but yeah, it's it would certainly be something that you could gamble on it for a bit of a hail mary and just try and win, I guess. Uh, but 
I very much doubt either of these teams are going to go for that. Norella will be spawning soon. And this actually is the important part of Trio. Of course, the, the final boss, when you when you kill this final boss here, and when she dies, the encounter is over. So these teams are going to be pumping DPS in. Make no mistake, they're going to go as hard as they can. You're going to see pre-buffing here to make sure everyone's got all the boons. You can see Deaxon doing that right now, actually. He's been druiding, okay? He's been hard-stuck druid the entire raid, okay? Like, you know, he has taken one for the team there, breaking out the druid, okay? Away yeah, from his beautiful warrior. warrior. Yeah, he was a warrior warrior main but now he is a druid main from dru from banner slave to spirit slave is dx but here we go norella now spawns here i believe any second now uh for uh see there we go norella is going to spawn let's just have a look i'm gonna look at the timer here when is norella going to die oil thrown as she incinerates herself boss getting melted not only by the oil, but by Snowcrow's DPS. And she is going to die at just about 9.05, approximately. And actually, ooh, that isn't good, Roy, because Norella spawned no. at 9.05, or, well, at 9.08, yeah. rather, for the downstate cucks. And SA, oh, these portals, look at the speed. They are just everywhere right now, clearing out all of the bandits as quick as they possibly can. Portals, of course, equally good there. Thief portal coming in there uh, from downstate Cux to move around just as fast as SC, but they are certainly behind here. They're going to have to hope that they something goes a little bit wrong for SC. A bit of a um, blast from the past on Matthias is uh, always a possibility, I think. Or they'd better have some serious DPS hiding somewhere because SC is about to start Matthias. Over. Yep, there we go. The portal to the boss is already set. The GGs are there, and they are done. They're going in now, and the boss starts. Matthias starts. At 9.52. And, uh... Yeah, there's oh. the portal from Wynn into you, Matthias. So you've got to give them that, though. That was faster, actually, Roy. <laughs> yeah. It was. Uh, but it's a 10% difference on Matthias, and... I, I don't know, man. We haven't seen Matthias really give any team issues. Like, not a single team that I think we've seen has had issues with Matthias. I mean, maybe it hasn't mattered for some teams, but... I, I think at this point, the, the time they lost coming in out of Sloth is, is what will lose them this wing. And so far, that's exactly what's happening here. It's under 70% now, just getting into 80% here for win. They're just, they're just behind, and there's not enough DPS, I think, in the world for win to, to catch up to SC. SC has to lose players, they have to fill mechanics, but again, I just I don't see either of those things really happening for them. I would be very, very surprised if it does. You never know what, you know, could happen halfway through this boss. And, yeah, wins DPS just, it isn't going to overtake SC's. It's not going to happen. It's certainly unlikely. And, of course, SC looking very, very firm there as well. Of course, they are going with the double thief setup, so they have every boon in the game permanently. Turns out that even if you do make that five target, it's still an incredibly strong thing to have. The damage is great uh, from win. It really, really is. And I actually think we are going to see an 11-minute run here like um, from SC. They've got 40% left and 45 seconds to do it. Yeah, this is going to be the first 11-minute run we have seen. And that, I believe, is actually a world record. Uh, again, they have broken a record that was set during the tournament. I believe win actually have the current world record with a 12.23. But SC are about to one-up them by, uh, what she, oh, it's gonna be close to she, oh, it might be like, oh, like 1150 maybe? Are they gonna get it? Oh, they wanna go for it. 20 seconds to go, can they make it work? 1% a second needs to happen here. Oh, it's gonna be so close, actually. If they miss it by one I... second, that is unfortunate. Oh, no. It looks good, though. <laughs> Six, five, four, three, two, one. And that's it. Yep, that is going to be it. Oh, no. 12 minutes on the dot. 12 minutes exactly on my timer there uh, for SC. Narrowly missing out on the sub-12. It's still a world record for the flicker. Oh, and the, uh, we have a spin happening here uh, for one of the players. He actually just GG's to make it just to make it safe there to secure the kill. He knows there's no point in even going for that res. And there it is, 12.22, uh, which is a very similar time. I believe almost identical to the uh, wing two that Deax and, uh, and the crew did earlier. But still, a hefty victory there for snow crows and they take it to a 2-1 score sc they are here to break the curse roy it's match point for sc five Wing three four three this is it. two one and they are off here we go match point for this tournament we might be done right after this wing this could be the last raid wing we see today and for this entire tournament Obviously, win not going to, you know, they're not going to just let it go like that. They're going to be trying to bring us to wing five. They're going to be trying to bring us 
to a fifth and final raid wing for the day. But SG are going to be trying their best to stop them. Let's see who can get this escort just a little bit better. Well, we'll have to see. Of course, the swiftness speeding up Glenna there as well. Uh, they're a bit of a, even, even some extra speed coming in there, of course. You'll, this is one of the fights where you actually see Tempest a, a lot, and you'll see other similar things here as well. You may even see something like Mortar Kit, actually, on the NGs, just for the blinds, because, of course, the big threat on this encounter is not going to be a boss or a particular NPC, not to the players anyway. The real threat is going to be the wargs. Every time you capture one of the five towers that you need to capture, two wargs spawn. And you need to kill them, otherwise they will kill the NPC that you are looking after, Glenna. And of course, funny enough, you can kind of ignore these as long as you have permanent blind, okay, or loads of Aegis or anything similar like that to keep your NPC alive. It definitely makes it very, very risky and very, very tense, but it does give you a lot of speed. Both teams, of course, are going to be doing a similar approach here. They're just uh, going very, very quickly between the towers, capturing everything up there, and just moving on as a team quickly. However, if my eyes do not deceive me, it almost appears that Win is actually uh, a, 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 a hair. A hair ahead right now, if anything. A smidge, if you will. Oh, a uh, 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 it's Why am I okay? A curse there on the Chronomars are going down site there, which is not what they want to see, but they get the recovery. Yeah, and I think it might be SC slightly ahead. Uh, I mean, it's it's honestly so close, it might not really be, like, a lead at this point, but SC do seem to clear the second-to-last tower, you know, faster than, than Wynn do. Um, now, we did see Wynn have a very good escort finish here. And they're done. They're actually, I think... Yeah, they're done. Yeah. They they are, yeah, they actually, they, are... uh, they do get the spawn. Although, having said that, SC actually do get the spawn at about the same time there, too. Yeah, I don't know. It's it's close. It's going to be very close moving into this. We, I think Wynn's escort was so impressive yesterday, you know, that the rest of the raid wing was almost, like, negligible. But here we see SC making it basically even, right? They, they're not going to fall behind off of escort. So it is going to come down to the rest of this raid wing, which is interesting because I think escort has been the deciding factor in a lot of these wings. Neither team, though, wiping on escort. Neither team having issues with it. Neither team falling behind by any real amount of time here on this. So we... KC, Twisted Castle Zero, they're up for grabs. For almost, I mean, this is basically, you know, the same thing that happened with Wing 2, right? It came down to the difference in sloth kill, time-wise, essentially, right? Because both teams, I think, had a very similar Matthias pre-event, and that was what usually, you know, changed things up. So both of these teams matched, or at least matching each other right now, in terms of movement around the map. But, uh, I see, maybe two ahead. Oh, we can watch the time yep. as the uh, as the gate explodes. Glenna in position for both teams. I think it's going to explode on stream a bit for a bit before uh, for win. That's because there's a bit um, a bit a bit uh, less delay. Three yeah. twenty three and three twenty one for SC. So SC two seconds, one to two seconds ahead right now. Yeah. Now I will say I think it's. That's not great for win, right? Because I think, again, going back to what I was saying previously around wing one, I think SC has better DPS. They seem to be able to out DPS win in general. So I think that win really are kind of relying on some of these these pre events, these in between boss phases to get them the win, to get them ahead by a couple of seconds. And now they are finding themselves behind by a couple of seconds. Now, two seconds easily can be made up. But if you're fighting against an uphill battle when it comes to DPS, those two seconds are very, very important and v even worse. So not being in the lead after Escort, not where, where win need to be at this point. That being said, as long as they can continue to perform well, you know, if SC makes a mistake here, if SC makes a blunder, which we've seen them do in the past, it could go back the way for win. Still, a, a couple of seconds ahead, a decent chunk of boss health bar ahead for SC right now. And they are taking the lead in Stronghold of the Faithful. Oh, are you ready for RNG, Roy? Here we go. SC roll bad luck. What a win going to get. Win get good luck. Oh, no. Roy, are you serious? Is, I mean, I guess it's not that unlike her. It's, it's basically a 50-50 they're rolling here. I, if this actually comes down to RNG and wins up, a win ends up ahead here, I have to say I will laugh. Uh, but I will feel very bad for SC. I admit it. I won't. <laughs> what? What? <laughs> Well, there you go. Okay. There you <laughs> well, both teams are entering into this intermission phase here as well. Now, of course, one phase there with getting the AoEs instead of the little ads. The little ads basically are just a little bit fast because you don't have to spread out. 
whereas the giant AoEs you are forced to spread, therefore losing a little bit of damage. So one of them is not a big deal. If SC rolls it twice in a row or three times in a row, that's when that starts to add up a little bit. But that's, of course, assuming that Win also gets perfect RNG. So if they get perfect RNG here, that will definitely probably end up with them ahead. Seeing as I, would, I look at the DPS right now, it's very comparable, actually. Uh, you can see the teams are... You, you, you can actually see the boss attacks are almost synced up. If you look at the streams right now, like for me, I'm looking at um, uh, Cry Phoenix, Luna, and Deaxon. The boss attacks animations are almost playing at the same time. Like, that's how close this is. Yeah, and uh, I'm just looking at the comp here because we haven't really touched upon it at all. It does look like the the NG difference here for uh, Win over SC. They've got double NG, and I believe Win, or sorry, SC. They have three mesmers, so they that's that's the the main difference here. There's also yeah, there's okay, so there's an Ellie for both teams, of course. Uh, but again, I, I think SC they're still maintaining this lead even with the bad RNG. Their 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 DPS Ooh. is just better. And downstate two downstates for Win instant revivals. But yeah, SC, they actually gain, they're, they're actually 5% ahead like uh, at that point in terms of DPS. They actually get the phase instantaneously there. Oh, they're trying to break the curse, Roy. They are trying to break the curse. They've been second I mean, they're throws. they're also just trying to win. They've been snow yeah. throws, and here they go. That is a very good port in there. Even with a bit of an annoying RNG moment there, they are still pushing forward. They are absolutely forging their path towards their victory, of course. Not a done deal. It's the second boss. There's still one more to go. And I think it's worth noting, we have seen an absolutely fantastic performance on Twisted Castle uh, with some masterful pathing him from Downstate Cux. That could certainly get them back to parity by the time they get to Zero, the final encounter. Yeah, but again, I just, I have to keep, you know, going back to it. I think, I, I will say this. I think that the DPS here on KC has been relatively close. I think that Win haven't really fallen too far behind with DPS, but it's still slower, and it's been slower, right? So it's, it's it, in general, we've consistently seen them have less DPS than SC, and again, if they can't make up a, a real amount of time, a real margin for error here in terms of, of time from Twisted Castle, I think that they are going, again, they're gonna have to rely on SC making a mistake, but so far, down to here for Win. the only mistakes, oh, the only sort of instability okay. we're seeing it's have Wynn. been on Win's side. Yeah, and one hole's been very low there. He does get his heal skill, which is nice. You know, able to save that. SC now moving on to the buffs, instantly pulling out that orb. Masterful there as well. Uh, very, very quick there um, from SC to get that done. And of course, now we see the same thing happening here for Downstate Cucks. KC is going to die. Keep Concert Falls 809 right there. Let's see what is going to be the differential here. How much have Win got to make up to keep their torment uh, hopes and dreams alive? It's a lot. It's 10 seconds. It's 9 seconds. Right? They, they killed it at 818, I believe. So they've got... It's, I mean, that, that's doable. That is very workable, right? 100%. If they can make this perfect... It is. They actually have a bit of hesitation, though, actually, moving on to the next fight. Uh, that is not really what they want right now. However, we are actually seeing very similar strategies here. Uh, they're both going for the warrior parkour here. Uh, Cry Phoenix there, Luna, doing the exact same uh, role as the players from SC. Portals, of course, coming through from both here. This could be... This is a great place for Wynn to make up um, some advantage here. They are very well known for their excellent movement uh, and incredibly uh, big skills when it comes to leaping about the place here as well. But SC, I mean, if anything, they're the ones who wrote the book on that, really. And they're equally yeah. as fast at moving through. And they're already nearly at the end. Yeah, we actually now see... Uh, now see obvious trash blinking and they're done at 908 oh and we actually see some players fall off here from cucks but i believe uh, a player made it anyway but i'm not gonna lie roy you know we were talking about how good um uh, downstate cucks were on this boss i hate to say it but it was better from sc and sc have now gained themselves even more time and now it's just zara left and they're already started and now downstate cucks are still not done with two and now they just finish it oh yeah, but that's a big delay. We were, you know, we were we were saying that maybe they they could hope to regain some time for the, from this boss, this event rather, uh, moving into Zara. But they're they're even farther behind than they were after KC. They haven't made up time. They've lost it. The the odds are against them at this point. And and again, I mean, now it really is the final moment, the final battle. If Zara falls to SC first, this is it. The tournament is over. Wins hopes are gone. They cannot continue. It's got to be a and wipe. It's got to be a wipe. SC has to mess up. SC has yeah. to lose a player. They have to lose a couple players. They have to wipe. 
something has to happen for, for them to not be able to kill Zera faster. And this is the, literally, this is the last boss that SC could mess up yeah. on. This is the last this time that SC could fail. They're not looking to do that. They're looking to close it out here. They're looking to win three in a row and put uh, win down 3-1 in the HRP. I don't know, Teapot. Zara already at 70%, 30% of her health is gone, and Win are now just flying to her platform. It does not look good for the boys from NA. Snow no, Crows looking to finally close out a tournament victory. Absolutely. I mean, th there could be some very weird things happening in the second phase, but to be honest, we haven't really seen that, to be honest, from any of the teams so far. They've all been more than capable. I think this is going to be it. This is going to be the breaking of the curse. Mela was the problem the entire time. No Mela, and all of a sudden, SC is going to win. Of course, I jest. Okay, okay, Mela, he, Mela's in a far better guild now anyway, hard suck, much better than SC. But anyway, SC, they are just moving towards their victory right now. They know that they can do this. They know they can finish this boss. It is Zera. This is not hard for them. They're about to annihilate it. They're about to burn it all to the ground and demonstrate that, oh yes, they can win a raid tournament. They deserve it, and they're about to get the title and the glory that they've wanted for such a long time. 50% boss health, a bit of gliding, and a bit of DPS is all that's in their way. We're talking less than a minute until the hard suck raiding party is over. Yep. Yeah, it's looking like that might be. I will say, I think Wynn had a very, very good first phase there from Zara. They've honestly maybe caught up a little bit of time, but I don't think it's possible for them to catch up enough. Uh, uh, in the second phase of Zera. It's just, there's there's almost no way it should be possible. Zera does not last very long. And I think the time they lost with KC, the time, I mean, the two seconds they lost from Escort, probably not relevant, but the time they lost on KC, the time they lost in Twisted Castle, it was just too much. And maybe they could have caught back up if they were closer here, but I think that unfortunately they did not give themselves enough space. They didn't give themselves enough time or room for that. And SC are looking like they're going to do it. 45% on Zera. 40% of a boss's health bar is all that separates SC from taking this win, from closing it out. Finally, 30% left on Zera's health bar. Teapot, I think this might just be it. Snowcrows, this this is their tournament victory. Yeah. This is about to be Here them beating down go. an A. We're beating zooming down in. win. We're zooming in. The players so are back. One more teleportation, 20%, but I don't think that's going to be able to stop them here. The shards are not even close. Nothing is even close. I don't think Zera can hold this back anymore. I think SC are about to find their tournament victory here. 10% health left over. The action key is blocked by the dome. One downside there on the druid. The revival comes through. 8%. There's not much left here. Can Zera do anything? I don't think so. Every mechanic's been dealt with perfectly by SC. They're about to finish it. 3%, 2%, and Snowcrow's win! Snow Crows win Hardstuck Raiding Party number one. They are your community heroes in an insane time of 1332. Not quite 1337 there for the elite time there, but that's it. It's one, three to one in the finals. The wing seven, it was merely a setback, a stumbling block. It is game over. Downstate Cucks battling hard, representing NA in a marvelous way, beating down. 17 Elitus and Quantify, but Snow Crows, the eternal guardians of PvE, lock it down with a 36 second lead, 14.02 from the Cucks, but that's not enough, and the tournament is over. That's GG well played.